Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be looking at Azure File Storage and I'm going to show you how you can share a file storage from Azure to a local machine and to one on the cloud and how you can move files between them. Today we're going to be talking about Azure File Storage. Now I just want to give you a brief overview of the features that it offers. Azure File Storage is fundamentally a storage type on Azure among many others. And some of the other types that are blob storage, table storage, and Azure storage queues that are all hosted within a storage account. However, Azure File Storage is one of the more popular options simply because it is a SMB share. In other words, it's a drop in replacement for anything that you could do with an SMB share similar to what you would do if you had a file server on Windows. And with the SMB share, you can then take that SMB share and mount it inside of an Azure VM, or you can even mount it on premise. So I can create a file share up on Azure and then take some of the settings from that. And then on my local machine, mount a drive and use that drive as if it were my Z drive in my local box, but all the files would be written up to Azure. Additionally, it supports Windows and Linux, so it doesn't matter if your VM is Windows or Linux or if your on-premise box is Windows or Linux, you can still use the SMB share on either one of those platforms. Also, the data can be replicated across Azure regions. Now, this is a nice feature that is baked into all file storage on Azure as well as disk and other types of storage that it allows you to replicate that data not only on, on the region that it's hosted in, but also across multiple other regions. Any piece of data that's written to Azure is actually written three times within the given region, but you can also have uh, zone redundant storage, which is, will replicate it across another availability zone on Azure, but you can also have geo redundant storage, which will co uh, copy that same data across Azure regions as well. And lastly, it does support things like snapshots, and uh, this gives you the ability to create point in time recovery um, points on your Azure storage shares. So with all these features, it's a very popular option for people that are wanting to go to the cloud but don't want to bring their file server to the cloud. They can simply go with Azure File Storage, stand this up, and then it acts as a drop-in replacement for most things that are done with file stores on premise. I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm going to start by creating a storage account here. So I'm going to come up here and then search for storage account uh, account and uh, I will be able to find one of these rather quickly and set this up. So on Azure, this only takes a few seconds to create one of these. So I'm gonna stick it into my file store demo and I'm gonna call it uh, Blaze um, Store, how about demo? And that will give me the a storage account there. I'm gonna put it in the North Central region. Um, and I'm gonna use standard. Now standard and premium are the two SKUs that are available. Standard typically uh, will max out around 60 megabits per second and premium will go much higher than that in order of magnitude better. I think it's up to 500 megabits per second. And note the account kind, I can just do purely a blob storage, storage version one or storage V2. If you're not, if you don't need uh, storage V1 for specific reasons, default to storage V2. And if you're only gonna be using blob storage, when you create a storage account, you can select blob storage. I'm not going to be using purely blob storage. I'm going to file storage. I'm going to go with storage V2. Now here's the replication I was talking about. I can have read access, um, geo redundant storage. Uh, I can have geo redundant storage, or I can have locally redundant storage. Now, uh, these different data, you know, tiers of storage will mean that I can have uh, the ability to create different storage levels within it so the data can be replicated to another region on Azure if I need to have that. But I'm gonna select locally redundant storage. Now with the access tier, I can have cool and hot. And this really only applies in certain circumstances when we're talking about uh, the, the ability to read and write data. Uh, cool and hot storage on Azure is basically uh, a tier that allows me to store something at a reduced rate if I select cool, but it costs money to read that data back out of the store at a higher rate than if I'm just storing it and just leaving it there. That's why we call it cool storage. Hot, it doesn't infer that rate, but the actual cost of reading and uh, of storing that data is higher per gigabyte than cool storage. So cool is really uh, designed for more like backups or long-term storage, while hot is intended for more active uh, storage that you're going to be reading and writing to uh, more often. Next, I can select uh, some things on the advanced. I can have a uh, 
uh, secure transfer required. I'm going to say yes to that. And then I can here open up all our selected networks. Now within a given subscription, I can actually bind it to a network if I wanted to, but since I'm going to be opening this up to the world, I'm going to, in my demo, I'm going to select all networks here. And then I can have data protection. I can do blob soft deletes and then I can do, but I'm not going to be using blobs or higher enable spaces for data lakes either. I'm just using file stores for this. Uh, we'll go into deeper dives and to blob stores later on and talk about that in, in depth. And I can do tags if I want to. And once I have all this ready to go, I can go create and my storage account will be created uh, here momentarily. Okay, now it looks like my storage account is done. I'm going to go click go to resource. And inside of this, you can see underneath this uh, overview that I have blobs, files, tables, and queues. Since I'm going to be dealing with files today, let's go ahead and select files. And then here is where I can create my file share. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this up and then call it a new share. I'm going to call it, um, let's call it um, demo share. And I can put quotas on if I want, but I'm not going to. And I'm going to have this uh, created and I have a, it's going to default to a five terabyte store uh, quota on this. So if I go open uh, this file share up, you can see here now that I have connect, upload, uh, add directory, and so on. So I can actually manage files within the context of this share right here. But if I want to connect to this, I can slip, simply select connect, and you can see here I have the ability to uh, connect it to Windows, Linux, and Mac OS if I, if I so, so desire. Um, so any one of these will uh, allow me to uh, give me the automation that I get to connect to this file share. So in the event of Windows, if I wanted to take this, um, I can open up PowerShell and run two commands or, or one of two commands and then have this available on my um, machine. Now I'm going to take one of these commands and I'm going to run them inside of a command prompt. I'm going to select a different drive letter. I'm going to use T for my drive. I'm going to take this second command. I'm going to alt tab over to my command prompt here and paste this in and let this run. So if I go to T colon, I should have a new drive available on my machine. So if I want to write a file to this, I can pop open explore and then come down to my demo share here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab something out of my pictures and let's say, uh, say Nick PNG, I think it's just an icon. And then let's put this right here and I can copy that up to Azure. And now let's go back over to the file share inside of the resource group and let's see if the file is indeed there. So if I come back over here to my file share and refresh, there's that file. I just uploaded a 4k PNG file. Now that my file has been uploaded, I can take this out of full screen mode. I'm going to connect to a virtual machine that I've created inside of my resource group. So let's come back over here and open up my file share demo virtual machine. And I'm going to connect to this guy. I'm going to basically grab this right here and I'm going to launch putty and paste it in to putty and then open it up. And then I'm going to punch in a password. And then that will connect me to my virtual machine. And then I'm going to get root access to that virtual machine. Now I can come over here and uh, I can make this thing a little bit bigger if I need to. Uh, appearance, and then I can go over here and change my font size if I need to to something. So it'll show up on the recording and then apply. That's a little easier to read. Now that I have this so we can read it, I'm going to run, the, run that Linux command that we saw earlier inside of my file store here. I'm going to go back to my file storage account, go to my files open up demo share, and then I'm going to go to connect and then select Linux right here. Now, basically this is just a string of commands that will mount this particular uh, file share at this point on my, my uh, root system uh, file system on my Linux box. So it's going to make a directory and run a couple commands and then um, uh, create some credentials for me on this virtual machine. So let's go ahead and paste these in and then, um, I can go over here and then uh, do cd slash mnt and I should be able to see my uh, file st st my file store already mounted right here. And so I can go cd blaze store and there is my PNG file. I can do an ls dash a just to see if it's 4k and it is. So you can see that with a simple command I can uh, actually mount my file store in Linux are mounted in Windows, or I can simply browse the files here inside of 
of the Azure portal, or I can actually use uh, Azure uh, Storage Explorer as well to browse these files as well. So there's a number of ways to connect to these uh, file shares. This is a very easy to use project, product on Azure, and one that's gonna be very useful for a lot of lift and shift scenarios for people going from on-premise to the cloud. And the event that you wanna get rid of a file server, this is something to consider as a replacement for that file server. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.